<clears throat> Hi, I'm Frank. And I'm Justin. In case you missed it, here's the news. So Sonic Crow creator Yuji Naka announced on his Twitter earlier this week that he had joined Square Enix earlier this month, joining game development. Details about his further role at the company are kind of under wraps at the moment, but it should be really interesting to see where he's going. Naka left Sonic Team in 2006 to start his own company, Probe, so that's leaving that company currently in question on the future of it. But we wish Naka the best, as he is the creator of one of the most iconic game franchise characters ever. Yeah, so in EA news, Anthem has been delayed again. And blah, blah, this blah. time, <laughs> we're a little bit worried about Bioware. Um, this is a make-or-break moment, especially since EA has been under such scrutiny, and they really want to make sure that this product is going to be good. They're obviously reworking the game to probably take out some of the microtransaction-heavy environment that they had, um, especially in the light of Destiny. So hopefully Bioware can pull it off Anthem does look like a really awesome game, and we're really looking forward to it over here, but if it's got microtransactions and it's very unfriendly to the player base, we're probably going to end up passing on it. Yeah, but we look forward to playing it sometime in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> so with new gaming release dates, the highly anticipated God of War game is going to finally be released on April 20th, along with Nintendo Switch's seemingly cardboard cutout product, the Nintendo Labo, which is also coming out on 420, and one just has to think that someone that wants to spend $80 on cardboard would probably be getting it on 420. Yeah, I feel like a lot of parents are going to be really angry and have a very hard time putting this together on this release date. It's certainly interesting and like Nintendo uh, pioneering, but we'll see if this uh, seemingly overpriced piece of cardboard is really going to be what kids are after. But hey, God of War, Nintendo Labo, April 20th is going to be a good day. Yeah, and God of War. Yeah, I'm actually excited for that. Yes, very much so. In Pokemon Go news... I know, right? Pokemon Go. Um, they're actually releasing 23 new Pokemon uh, from the third generation. So they're also releasing a new egg mechanic as well as a few other things. And it could be really interesting. Uh, I haven't played it in months, uh, but you know what? With the updates now, I might go check it out again. Um, maybe if I left my cave a little bit more, I'd probably play it. Yeah. Interesting enough, I actually ran into a guy on the street who was still playing it and actually talked to me quite a bit about the new features and updates, and it sounds fun, but I'm not going to play it. So French game developer Quantic Dream, known for their upcoming release of Detroit Become Human and previously Beyond Two Souls, Heavy Rain, Fahrenheit, and Omicron the Nomad Soul, are facing are finding themselves in hot water due to allegations that might be stemming from uh, former employees about sexual harassment, racism, and other nefarious accusations against its founder, David Cage, and others. More details of this will come as we find more about it. Seemingly Epic's stepchild, Paragon, is reportedly going to close down soon because of Fortnite success. We're not really sure exactly what's going on, but obviously Fortnite has kind of bit into Paragon's development, and it seems that the developers are starting to move away from this project and focus on something that's making them more money. Yeah. With the runaway success of the Battle Royale mode in Fortnite, obviously the player base is completely skewed what Paragon used to have. Even PUBG has hit 4 million players in the Xbox One version alone. So obviously, between the two games, it seems that Epic wants to put its resources in the game that's getting the most players, and obviously right now, as far as Battle Royale modes go, that is being led by PUBG and Fortnite over games like Paragon or Paladins. So, seemingly, we're going to be getting another video game movie. Yeah. Um, John Cena seems to be the frontrunner to play Duke Nukem in a Duke Nukem movie, which, I'm going to be honest, could be actually pretty awesome, uh, especially if they make it fun and raunchy. 
I definitely agree. I mean, way back when there was announcements that Dwayne Johnson was going to be a, uh, on the short list to be Duke Nukem. And as much as I like Dwayne Johnson, he's not really aesthetically the look of uh, Duke Nukem compared to a different wrestler, uh, John Cena. Furthermore, also in wrestling-related nudes, it seems that the XFL is coming back. And oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, with with the NFL in it having two years of consecutive low, lower ratings in its history, I'm sure that audiences are just clamoring to have m more football. Yeah, XFL. I mean, <laughs> I mean the, X, the XFL, uh, I mean, is it real or fake? I don't really know. Uh, this is going to focus more on just football. Uh, he, Vince McMahon wants to launch it in 2020, and you know what? I will probably give it a go because why not? It can't possibly be the failure that it was back in 2001. And I won't watch it because it's pointless. <laughs> it will fail. Uh, you heard it here first, guys. All right, well, that's the news for the week. I'm Frank... And I'm Justin, apparently. Yeah, and we're the Dude Bros. And, yeah, we'll see it. See you next time. I'm not seeing anyone. I'm staring at a camera. Yes.